Hello everyone and welcome to the Houston Real Estate Talk by Stone and Fields. Today I'm here with Tobias Engel and I am Carilis Perez. Welcome. Welcome Toby. How are you today? Thank you. Welcome. Very good. Very good. Well, today we're going to bring you the most up-to-date market information here in Houston, Texas. Toby, how was your week? Let's start there. I had an interesting week, so a little bit of something of uh, like a bit of leasing, a bit of new construction, looking for a remodel for some clients, so a good. nice mixed busy week. Yes, busy, busy. The Houston real estate market stays busy. We haven't stopped. It's been an incredible beginning of the year and Toby's going to elaborate on that. Let's see. What do we got? Let's talk about sales in general. Right. Yes. So, well, this is the second month of the new year. And for the second time, we've seen a considerable growth in sales compared to last year. Okay. This made me remember, though, that last year in February, we went through this horrific freeze mm -hmm. when all these little disasters at everyone's house happened. Um, so sales compared to February last year rose with 22%. But of course, closings were down last February because of this freezing. So it's like not a completely fair comparison. Sure. But if you compare it to February 2020, there's a difference of 23%. Okay. So in any case, wow. regardless, we see a steady right. increase in sales still. This, this is really yeah. good. Really good. So that's for uh, single family homes, okay, 22%. Okay. For townhomes, sales jumped 36%. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And I noticed that last year townhomes weren't that I don't, attractive, I guess, because people were <clears throat> looking for bigger backyards and townhomes don't offer that benefit. But as the market has shifting and people going back to the offices and getting back to the normal, um, I guess the townhomes now are back in trend, right? Who knows? Could be. Yeah. <laughs> and then overall, the total dollar vo volume of all sales in Houston compared to February last year is up 43%, which is crazy. It's impressive. So sales are up, prices are up. So it's just accelerating yes. on all yes. sides. So yeah. that means that basically we're still <clears throat> with multiple offer situations in the majority of the market, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Tell me about rentals. So with fewer ho homes available to purchase, you know, a lot of people still find themselves with no other alternative but to rent. Right. And um, therefore also rentals are on the rise still. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, up twenty three percent compared wow. to last year. Um, That's six, very significant. The, yeah, and the average price of rentals for single family is up six point five percent, at an average of two thousand and fifty two dollars. And for townhomes and condominiums, it's decreased actually one really? percent rentals. Yeah, nevertheless, rental price went up with eight percent. And the average rental price for townhomes or condominiums is seventeen hundred and sixty-seven. Wow! Yeah. A few years ago, I remember it was roughly in the fifteen hundred dollars, right? Two hundred dollars more. It's significant for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Inventory. How are we doing with inventory? Well, inventory just seems to get smaller and smaller by the by the month, which it makes buying a home really difficult for us and but especially for our clients the buyers of course so the number of total active listings so available properties went down with 10 percent versus last year uh, and all because you know uh properties are just snatched away right you know right continuously Correct. at a very fast pace Correct. And this is the February market <clears throat> report. So that means that it takes a lot of into consideration that we're coming back from the holidays. People are waking up now from all this BC season. And the majority of the people don't want to list properties during the holiday. So they wait until the beginning of the year. So probably now we're going to see more properties going new into the market. And hopefully we'll bring those numbers up to yeah. the next month or so, right? Hopefully. But mind you, you know, towards the summer, people are more buying yes. as well. So that's true. More demand. More demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, inventory slid to 1.3 months. Okay. 
versus 1.5 months wow. last February. And uh, over the past year, the highest level of inventory that we've had in Houston was 1.8. Mm-hmm. So it's really at the lowest ever, while nationally it's at 1.6 months. Okay. So Houston is particularly low. Low. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And the number of days on the market, so the actual time that it takes to sell a home, mm-hmm. dropped from 48 days down to 41 days. Okay. So it's still a little over a month, but yeah. it's still fairly quickly, right? Just considering, you know, a little bit over a month is it's nothing. quicker and quicker. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. absolutely. So you also notice that for a while there, lenders have difficulty keeping up, mm-hmm. but now you notice that, you know, you can... Normally, you can close within 30 right, days right. still. So, And it's good that you bring this up because actually I've noticed it with appraisals too. Yeah. Before, the, you know, like a year ago, appraisers were having such a difficult time meeting those deadlines. But this year, I don't see that happening. I see them meeting the deadlines, you know, like within seven days of the vested, et cetera. So we're, I'm not seeing delays in closings uh, because of yeah. appraisal, due to appraisals. Mm-hmm. So did you find as well with appraisals that it seems like now appraisals are meeting- Are catching up. Are catching up yes. at a level that we feel right. is the market price. Correct. Because I remember last year, mm-hmm. a year ago, Appraisals often did not meet meet the right. sales price, which was very frustrating yes, yes. for all parties involved. Right. right. And now I've actually had some surprise mm-hmm. surprising yeah. appraisals that were higher than right. you know right. what we No, um, you're totally right. Yeah. Totally right. They've been catching up. It took them a while. I remember again last year or so <laughs> when appraisals arrived and they were always below what the agreed price was. And people will have to show up with extra cash at closing. I don't see as much as that happening these days. I think that that that's finally it's at a level where it's it's more normal and appraisals uh, are coming back good, you know, at price or a little bit above the uh, agreed sales yeah. price, which is really good news. So about pricing. Mm-hmm. So the average price of single family homes increased with 13% wow. versus last year to an average of almost $400,000. So three ninety five, eight hundred and seventy one mm-hmm. is the You're average. Wonderful. Yeah. And the average price for townhomes and condominiums mm-hmm. increased with 22% to 266,000. Wow. Yeah. These numbers are, it's not a 3%, <clears throat> it's not a 5%. Everything that you've mentioned goes over the 20% yeah, here it's and like, there. It's crazy yes. increases. Wow. So I read a little interesting something okay. that Walmart is starting to sell mortgages. What? Actually. And um, this article mentioned somewhat of a sarcastic tone, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Because the typical Walmart shopper has an, an income of $80,000 a year. Interesting. Okay. And, you know, a rule of thumb is that you spend about or a maximum of 30% of your income on housing. Right. Well, with this average price of 395000 Walmart shoppers, you know, are not going to be able to afford a house. Mm. Despite yes. being able to go shopping for their mortgage right. at Walmart. So it gave a critical note saying, so although Walmart's low deals might offer customers a shopping discount, the convenience of getting your mortgage at Walmart can't guarantee that they can afford home ownership. That's so true. I'm afraid. Yes. Which is yes. painful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because a lot of people are going to be, you know, they're going to remain outside of that opportunity group, right? Yeah. So those are the ones that end up leasing and the rental market is going up so it gets more expensive and more expensive for everyone Mm -hmm. and then you know about being able to afford a home if you look at the different price segments that um homes for sale below one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that market decreased with 53 percent 
Wow. So it looks like that market is altogether yes. disappearing. Absolutely. But Absolutely. luckily, I have a listing coming up for one forty nine thousand next week. So <laughs> that's keep, wonderful. Be on the news. lookout. Yes, yeah. that's great. Call Toby. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And but the same for homes below two hundred and fifty thousand, with mm -hmm. a decrease of forty four percent. So okay. also that segment it's shrinking. Is shrinking right. enormously. Then from 250 to 500,000 increased by 80%. Okay. So that's where the market is right. at the moment. Below mm -hmm. 500, but above 250. Okay. Below 1 million is increased with 72%. Okay. And you and had something to say about the 1 million range, yeah, right? Yeah. So the market <laughs> above 1 million increased with 33%. Wow. And now this is uh, news that came from Redfin. Right. A record of 8.2% of the homes in the US mm -hmm. is now valued at above $1 million. So that means 6 million homes. And this is even more amazing if you compare it to before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that's two years ago yes. now. So before the pandemic, just before the pandemic, only 4.8% homes were above a million. So that's three and a half million homes wow. were above one million. And now it's six million homes are priced above right. one million. So that means that people have more money, more affordability and jobs are paying better. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, but it's also impressive. it's just the it's market impressive. is moving up, is moving up, yes. is moving up. Right. So um of the top 10 cities mm -hmm. we have with highest pricing, seven of them, not surprisingly, are in California, where right. we all know prices are pretty yes. crazy. And with in San Francisco topping the chart, 88% of all homes are priced above a million. It doesn't surprise me. Number actually. two <laughs> is San Jose with 85% above you know, one million. Right. Um, so the Bay Area in general mm -hmm. is the most expensive place to live in the US. Wow. With median sales price of 1.4 million. Very good. And even though, you know, there's a big move out of California be because of these home prices, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Austin has become the new tech hub in the US. Yes. Still, these prices are going up, oh, up, yes. up. So there seems to be a lot of demand Absolutely. still. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the houses, the housing market in Austin is been changing and it's going to continue to go up significantly. That's interesting to see if eventually it becomes so similar to what California prices yeah. are. So we better buy that vacation home now before it's too late. <laughs> Let's if go you to want Austin. a home in the hill country, yes. better buy now yeah, because yeah, yeah. who knows. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this is right. great. So lastly, mm -hmm. you know, somewhat of a... This seems like a sh shadow looming over all of us, although it's uncertain, of course. And that how will the local housing market develop with surging oil prices? Right. Did you? Oh, you drive electrical. Yes. Oh, yeah. I do not, so I shouldn't ask <laughs> yes, you. But man, no. those prices at the pump. I know. Well, know, my husband, he still has a gas. Cost you yes. an arm and a leg yes. to fill up your tank. Absolutely. And the general economic fallout, you know, as a result of what's going on in Eastern Europe. Yeah. As a, is a very uncertain effect yes. on anything and everything right. in the world. Right. So, it's the unknown, what we're living yeah. right now. Yeah. So let's see how long we can sustain this incredible growth yes. in yes. homes. But, yeah. well, fingers crossed. Fingers and, crossed. You know, hope that the effect will be limited. Absolutely. In short term, we don't want to drag right. anything beyond what definitely. All right. So that's Houston. This is great. This is Houston Real Estate Market presented by Toby Engel. Tobias Engel, and I am Carilis Perez. If you have any questions about Toby's listing <laughs> under the hundred and fifty thousand dollars, please There'll give him a call. One, there will be one home for sale below one hundred and fifty, and I'll be listing it. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're here to help. Thank you so much for watching, and please follow us on our social media. Have a great day. Bye bye. We did good. Oh. Yeah.